I would rather be crazy and unrealistic than be realistic if that means accepting uh, the conditions that are leading to the destruction of the earth and the devastation of so many of her people. I have had no teacher bigger than the seed. Not a book, not a text, not a journal. I said, it's this little, little form of life, the seed, that has taught me every lesson. The problem is not just uh, social structures, it's also psychic structures. Uh, after all, our institutions are projections of our own souls, of our own beings. So if we're really going to make lasting change, we've got to change the inside of people as well as the outside of our institutions. And um, both has to be going on at once. We're breeding a whole, a whole society of eco-illiterate people who don't have the chance to develop a deeper understanding of the earth and natural processes. And instead, to manipulate or remove nature is all too comfortable for many people. It's not good to have too many trees. It might fall on my house. To suddenly be in a position where we're being called forth to address an issue of this magnitude, you know, I, I just think it's a tremendous privilege and it can be also be very um, upsetting. humans don't realize that we live in the same body as the rest of the earth and we think that we can somehow profit from destroying that, destroying that. There's global warming, loss of topsoil, scarcity of water and the poisoning of our waters, there's nuclear radioactive waste, genetic engineering, the list goes on and we all hear it all the time, you know, it's practically a litany of, of the threats. The fundamental problem is anthropocentrism or human centeredness. This idea that human beings are the center of everything. Now, the science of ecology says that nothing is at the center, that the world isn't a pyramid with human beings on the top. The world is a web, and we humans are one strand in that web. And as we start cutting the other strands in the web, um, it's not doing us any good whatsoever. This way of thinking about it is called deep ecology. We are all beings. We are not just human beings. Until we start thinking every day, every minute, in terms of our context with respect to all life, we're not going to get it right for ourselves. So it is living democracy is about the democracy of all life. And if we don't have a real relationship with the earth, we're not going to be very effective as earth healers or earth changers or Consciousness changers. Open our eyes and look around. Open our ears and look around. And listen to what the birds are saying. Listen to what the trees are saying. Listen to what the earth is saying. Listen to what the earth is saying.
Aquinas in the 13th century, a theologian, said Revelation comes in two volumes, nature and the Bible. Well, it's that nature as revelatory that's been ignored for centuries. And uh, this is where you have the fundamentalists, you know, thinking all of Revelation is in a book. It's so silly. The book is 2,000 years old, 2,500 years old. And nature has been telling us about the divine for 15 billion years. The nature out there and the nature in here are one and the same. They're continuous. There is no separation. That the sense of separation that all modern humans are suffering from is the problem. It's that illusion of separation that allows us to treat the world as if it was a resource. You know, That if we understood that this is part of my own body, that I have no independent existence, that whatever happens to the earth happens to me. If I understood that not just as an idea, but as a living reality, as part of who I am, then I couldn't treat the earth this way any longer. We're taught in school, we're taught in religion to stay up in our heads. And that's why we're not in love with the earth enough to defend it. The only identity the global marketplace would like to leave us with is a consumerist identity. And out, outside that, we are nothing. And, and part of what the whole ecological identity does is let you know that whatever you need can come in simpler ways, more sustainable ways, more wholesome ways. We have a whole universe of revelation and of um, inspiration that's coming our way, but we ignore it. Unless uh, we can have a kind of a spiritual revolution, then those changes that we put in place at the institutional level will not be binding. We need a, a total revolution, a complete revolution that's both inner and outer. Something is happening to the earth, something that requires action, and it's something that is of a spiritual nature. The change that needs to take place in human beings in order to meet this challenge and in order not to become extinct ourselves, not to join the hundreds of thousands of species that are becoming extinct before our very eyes, that merely uh, political change isn't going to do that. You know, No technical fix is going to get us out of this, that it's only um, a profound revolution in consciousness that can allow us to move through the present crisis and uh, into um, a shining future. If we don't deal with the inner shadow, basically, then we're going to project it out into the world. And so we need to do our own psychological work of transforming ourselves to recognize and befriend our own shadow side so that we're not continually reflecting it and needing it to manifest in somebody else who we want to see as the enemy. If there's a war inside going on, then we're going to see a war outside. What is the nature of this change that um, we need to make and um, how are we to go about it? What can we do in order to invite this change in ourselves, in our associates, in our communities and in our world? I frankly think the only thing our species is going for us is creativity. That's why we need schools, we need educational systems and worship systems that awaken creativity, that encourage creativity. Uh, we don't have the answers. We have some, we don't have that many, but what we do have is the power of creativity to, and imagination to come up with answers. To have a vision of a world where communities actually have control over their own resources, where we solve problems and solve issues um, by using local sustainable resources and people's ingenuity and people's creativity uh, instead of massive amounts of capital and money and fossil fuels and force. At the core of our being is a 15 billion year history that we all share and the elements of the universe that uh, are in us all, irrespective of whatever external uh, diversity and differences there are. And that is where ritual uh, is such a, a powerful way to get people to change. And not just as individuals, but communities, groups of people, because ritual is the coming together of the, of the community.
Joanna Macy and I had developed this um, new uh, form combining deep ecology with her work in despair and empowerment, which we called a council of all beings. The first thing that we do is that each of us finds an ally in the non-human world. Human beings, right from the word go, not just modern human beings, have this tendency to disappear into our own concepts of the world and forget about the actual world that we come from. We need these reminders on a regular basis as to who we really are and all our relations. It was impossible to find a single example of an indigenous culture, an intact indigenous culture, that didn't have ceremonies like this, that everybody found some reason to practice ceremonies where the human community acknowledged our interconnectedness with the rest of the earth community and through acknowledging that in a ritual manner, nurtured that interconnectedness. best to combine the most creative actions of constructive work and the highest form of resistance to the biggest abuse of power. Remember that just standing up, speaking our truth, is meaningful in and of itself. You know, the end is not Monsanto, the end is the seed here on the farm. And Monsanto is a byproduct. And I'm sure if we can save the seeds here and we can save our cultures and we can save our values and we can save our solidarity, then we've already defeated Monsanto. I think what, what needs to happen in our species today is we, we all have to fall in love all over again. And we have to de-anthropocentrize this experience of falling in love. We have to fall in love with the trees and with the animals and with the earth, the stars, with our existence. A couple of years ago we started the I Love George Bush campaign just to make that point. <laughs> but um, it's difficult. <laughs> There's a man who goes down to the beach and sees a man there, uh, the tide's going out and he's picking up starfish <coughs> from the beach and throwing them back into the ocean and this guy looks at him and he says, what are you doing? There's, you know, there's millions of starfish on the beach and they're all going to die and, you know, you're throwing a few of them back in, you know, before the tide and, and, and as the man picks up the next one, he says, well, it certainly matters to this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First verse of the universe. universe Pours forth like a sea of mystery Out of the void, unmanifest silence Space time comes into existence Unseen shaping, swirling, unfurling Hydrogen helium divines reveal within Galactic whirlpools as energy flows in A star collapse, supernova explosion A cloud, a cloud of cosmic debris Drawn together by gravity? By the mystery of attraction Primordial bonding, bonding, universe action. 
Stardust swirling, swarming gases Organizing and forming masses See the sun's the one that spun the nine others Gave birth to Mother Earth and his sisters and brothers Mercury, Venus, Mars and Jupiter Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto Everyone is the sun, the sun is the one Everyone is the sun, the sun is the one Everyone is the sun, the sun is the one Celebrate life. I just want to celebrate. Celebrate Earth. I just want to celebrate. Celebrate the cosmos. I